the iconic 1,000 true fans, the most popular thing you've ever written. Right. Why do you think that is the case? And what would you double down on or revise if you were to take another stab right. at it today? The honest answer, one of the reasons why it's right, we can talk about maybe why, why it's good and useful and then why it's popular. The reason why it's popular is actually through you. you for the, the fact that you included it in one of your books and that sort of lifted it out of my little realm. The reason why maybe it kind of resonates with people mm -hmm. is because there is sort of a, an assumption that the goal is to hit it big, the big time, bestseller, a hit. And most people kind of come to associate that, those numbers, that kind of large scale with success. And the idea that success could look differently, that you could have a more modest size scale and that be successful, sometimes is dismissed as lifestyle businesses or whatever. And I kind of realized that the technology would allow a different version of that. That it was possible and that it would be good. Mm -hmm. It would be good for people. And so that was, I think people can resonate with that because it's, it's a viable alternative option to things that was not spoken before. It was not even really on the radar. And when I wrote it, when I first wrote it, before you even saw it, there was no Kickstarter, there was no patron, and I was challenged by people like Jeremy Lanier to say, well, you know, that's a nice theory, but there isn't any evidence that this is actually working. And it was actually at that time, I did a follow through and I tried to find evidence and there was, there was evidence of established artists from publishing or music or studios who had already an audience and could move off mm -hmm. of that to their own. But there wasn't any evidence of an indigenous organic growth from nothing. Now there is, every day, people write to me and meet me, say, yes, I have been able to do that, inspired somewhat by hearing of that possibility. Is there anything that you would modify in that piece? Or emphasize more? So I did a modification for you, which I was, that. I talked about the fact that one, again, one benefit and one disadvantage. The one benefit is, is that part of what we're, we're doing is if all you need is a thousand true fans, then even if your interests are one in a million, given the population of the earth, of billions of people, that means there's a thousand people potentially on the planet who will share your interests. Mm -hmm. so if your interests are only one in a million people, then you still have enough. And then the second thing was that just to emphasize to people that this is not for everybody that tending the fans and interacting with them is almost like a half-time job at least, maybe even more. And not everybody's suited to do that. An artist might just want to paint. They don't want to deal with fans. And we see more of dealing with fans. What it means is it's not always pretty and it can burn you out. And so I just want to emphasize that this is an option and you don't have to go all the way. You can have your thousand true fans and then you can have lots of other casual fans and other fans, which would allow you to have other people help you. So it's not just you. And then secondly, for some people, you want to have intermediaries. It's just not something you want to spend your time doing. And that's perfectly fine. But it's a really great place to be able to start from. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't want to land there. But that's one of my pieces of advice is that where you start is not where you're going to land. And so you, this is a good place to start. That's exactly what I was going to say, which is even if you want to hypothetically build a huge company and change the world, although I'm very skeptical of people <laughs> who lead with that, I think most businesses fundamentally are lifestyle businesses. If you really double click mm -hmm. and look at it closely enough, even if someone aims to be a Fortune mm -hmm. 500 CEO, in any case, the point I want to make is even if you have these very lofty, large scale goals, beginning with the exercise, of reading 1,000 True Fans mm -hmm. and at least considering what your approach would be to accomplish that first is mm -hmm. a great yeah. fundamental step. Right. And partly that is because you get 1,000 True Fans 
by accumulating them one by one. If you're focused on like today, I'm gonna get one more additional customer. Mm -hmm. That is tremendously powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, customer by customer, are they happy? Am I giving value to them? You know, if you can focus on that, that is incredibly a superpower. Yeah, for sure. And if you can take those one thousand true fans and right, and some subset of them become your PR slash marketing forces, then things can multiply very quickly.